Minister, um, in, on the 10th of January this year, you're probably aware, um, or I, I don't know whether your officials are aware or not, that uh, in Brussels, um, in the Transport Committee, um, an amendment was put uh, at the Transport Committee uh, to include uh, more parts of Ireland, which is actually the, the Western NARC or the, on TINT funding, but it also included uh, the amendment stated uh, the, the, under the European Commission's Brexit uh, mitigation proposals um, in relation to the Atlantic Corridor to include the ports of Shannon Fines, which was always in it, Dublin Rosslare, uh, Waterford Cork, to link Bresk, uh, Ruskov, um, Cherbourg, and look at this four or five more places in France and different other countries. You'll be in Brussels, I presume, after that, because it didn't go to a vote, which is unusual. It was fully agreed. It did not go to a vote in MEPs. Um, when you're in Brussels uh, for the, I think it's a trilogue, is it what you call it, when you, when you go over to Brussels in the coming weeks in a meeting um, with the European Commission, can you commit, because um, as has been pointed out by all deputies, um, the likes of Donegal and the west of Ireland has been badly affected. Under this amendment, and I presume you're accepting the amendment for Ross Lair and um, for Waterford and the areas that has been included, has been included um, this comes under the same uh, as was in 2012 for basically along the Atlantic Corridor. The Western NARC. Um, can you confirm that uh, if this is the case, as which I have pointed out, that what you, when you go to Brussels, that that amendment is there, will you give an undertaking that you will include uh, the rest of the West of Ireland, which has been um, committed to in the programme for government? And I think that um, my understanding is that in the last few weeks, um, that you've got. Uh, letter or an email or, or a letter from the AC Task Force to, uh, to get that area put into the TIN-T maps um, and could you just make a comment on that or confirm that that area would be put into it because what we have to remember Donegal, be it Monaghan, be it Sligo and those areas along the periphery of the border, um, Loud is in it at the moment because it would be up from Newry to, to Dublin. Um, that those areas which will be, if there is a hard Brexit, will be hit ferociously hard, that that will be included as was in 2012 and as is now in the programme for government that said it would do it, uh, I think, a couple of years ago. Thank you. If it's an order, Minister, uh, while we're waiting, uh, our two senators, if you could reply to, uh, start to reply to Deputy Troy, if that's OK. And then we can take Senator Manley and obviously the commitment. Okay, if, if with, with your permission, I'll refer 10 key questions to Mr. Burke because he's an expertise in that which I which I don't have. I mean, I can talk to him and then talk back to you, but he, but I I might uh, I might refer that um, those ones to, to him. That that will be uh, Deputy Fitzmaurice and Deputy Troy's questions on t 10 t 10 t Deputy Troy asked about the network changes and about updating with the Commission. Would you be able to deal with those, those ones? And the, and the questions from Deputy Fitzmaurice. On, sorry, the Deputy Munster's question and... No, no, I'm, just, I'm just trying to keep... Just the two, uh, okay. just the two sorry, questions. Sorry, Minister, uh, if I just so, want to get this right, because yeah. I don't want people to be given out about me not being fair to everybody. I think Deputy Troy's questions should be answered first. Oh, yeah, and if there are... It's the first question he asked. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah. No, no, just to make it right. And That's then right. we go on then to Deputy Munster. If yeah. Senator Manley is not here, but I need to bring uh, Senator O'Kady if and when he returns to make his contribution. So I just want to get that right. Yeah. Okay. Apologies. Uh, Thank you, uh, Deputy Senator. Um, in relation to the Connecting Europe facility and, and Tens T, um, there's three elements, I suppose, to what's happening in Brussels at the moment. There's, uh, there's one is a proposal uh, for uh, Brexit uh, that's linked directly to Brexit, which is a realignment of the North Sea Mediterranean Corridor, which is a corridor that runs from uh, Ireland into the UK, Benelux, and into uh, France and down through Marseille. Um, and what's been looked at there is, to, with the UK leaving, uh, how do we realign that corridor so that it will look coherent and will be coherent? 
And what Krishna proposed uh, and we have uh, accepted is that it should be links in from um, Dublin Port, uh, Cork Port, and we've asked for Shannon Fines to be included in that as well. That would link into the northern French ports and would link into uh, Belgium and uh, Dutch ports as well. We asked that what we've looked for is for, uh, for connections into the Seabrugge, Seabrugge uh, Antwerp, uh, Calais, um, the uh, no sure because it's on the sorry I'll get you the list uh, deputies yeah, you come back to me if you yeah, want no the there's, there is on on a separate um, a second a, se a separate aspect of what's happening is there's a real, uh, the funding for 10 from 2021 is being renegotiated at the moment uh, it's a regulation that's been brought in as part of that regulation we have asked that we also be linked into Le Havre, uh, which is on the Atlantic corridor. So it will be two different corridors that we will be linked into. And so far the Commission have, have accepted this. The French are very strong in favour of this as well. So what we will have under the new regulation, if it goes through, as it is at the moment, is a link into uh, the French ports and uh, on the North Sea Mediterranean corridor and the Dutch and the Belgian ones, and also Le Havre on the, um, on the Atlantic corridor. We can only connect into ports that are on the, the core network. Um, and at the moment, those are the ports that are on the core network. Uh, as part of uh, the, re the renegotiation of the funding mechanism for 2021 onwards, we have also uh, sought with both ourselves, Malta and Cyprus, we have looked to change the initial commission proposal. And the initial commission proposal was that they would only fund on the comprehensive network cross-border projects. Uh, and the rest of the comprehensive network, of which the vast majority is, is in Ireland, the vast majority of our network is on the comprehensive, uh, that they weren't going to, to fund that. Uh, we did a joint position with Malta and Cyprus, uh, and we also separately ourselves looked for um, any member state that hadn't or that wouldn't have a, a land border with another member state, that it, it would allow funding for all the comprehensive network. And the Commission have accepted that as well. So what it means that in the next round we'll continue to have funding available for the comprehensive network that wasn't in the, the Commission's original proposal. Um, and on the remainder of TINS-T, uh, we have met with the Commission uh, in terms of a review deputy of the, uh, of the network and we have asked for a review um, across the table with the Commission. We have yet to submit a full uh, request to them, but we've raised it a working party as well, uh, that we would have a review in light of Brexit, that we would have a review. We have made, in, in everything that we have kind of said to the Commission, we're conscious of the fact that Brexit uh, has particular implications for connectivity, connectivity from the island of Ireland into the, our continental markets. And that the absence of the UK from that will mean that areas, particularly in the West and the North West, will become more peripheral uh, that would have been the case otherwise in terms of getting to the markets. And that's a part of the Commission that have been forthcoming in that, but we have asked at Working Party for that review. We've said it across the table. We have to formalise it in terms of a formal submission that will take account of what we will see as being the implications for Brexit. Um, just that this is important, and thank you for your response. Um, my understanding is an amendment is, has been passed by the Committee on Transport in Europe on the 10th of January. Are you familiar with that? It's the Parliament, I think. Yeah, it's the Committee, on, the committee yeah. that sits of MEPs yeah. on transport. An amendment was passed that included uh, Waterford Port, uh, Rasselaer Port, and all the different areas that I said uh, on that. Now, if you look at the uh, original that was here in Ireland in 2012, Waterford was connected through rail up to Galway. It was connected to Baronet, it was and what I am asking you is if that amendment which is going to am I right in saying trilog uh, yeah. where the ministers yeah. meet and that um, is coming up in the next few weeks is my understanding that that amendment I presume Ireland is going to accept it because it's a good thing that you'll make a core note but when that amendment is there I presume that she can put in an amendment as well which is my understanding that the likes of Killybegs, Galway Port or, Sh or Knock Airport. Knock Airport can actually get, if you look at it, a special status because it's in a peripheral area. That because of the Brexit implications, my understanding is that's acceptable in Europe. And will ye go about it that way in the next few weeks, the way that we get it back onto it rather than having to wait a few years? Yeah, 
The difficulty there, deputies, is that it's only if you're on the core network uh, that you can be on, on the corridors and on those realignments. Uh, and at the moment, some of those areas are not on the core network and therefore can't be part of the, the, the realignments. The, the corridors were also set on the basis that they linked the, the, uh, the key urban nodes uh, within the territory. And in our case, on the Isle of Ireland, that's from Belfast, Dublin and Cork. We have an offshoot in Shannon Fines because of the maritime connection there. But what the, the Department uh, are proposing, my understanding, and we have raised this with the Commission, is that those areas are not eligible to be put on, on the core network. Just, just here, Washford Port was not the core node and it has now gone through on the amendment. Yeah. So just to be clear, that was not on the, the Dublin, but, Cork, or it was not on the Limerick. No, uh, but, but uh, what is in the regulation at the moment is the comprehensive, we have two comprehensive ports, which is uh, Ross Lear and Waterford, both of those, but they are not core ports. The only core ports that we have in the island of Ireland, well, sorry, in, 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 in Ireland, is Cork, yeah, and Shannon Fines is on the yeah, ports. But it, it, it is now on this amendment, be, no. making them. But I suppose the point to make is that at the moment you cannot go on any of the corridors unless you are in the core. So I'm part of the reason that we'd be looking for a, uh, a review is to take account of Brexit and what that means for traffic flows within Ireland and also uh, off the island of Ireland. Could you, add, could you undertake, or give us an undertaking that you will go to Brussels, look at this, or go look at this amendment, and if it's a case that Ross Lair is getting that status that Shannon has and Dublin has, um, that Kelly begs because it's right beside the border, that like the Galway Port and Knock Airport, that they are put onto the the whole infrastructure of it to try and include more of Ireland. And I, and I think Knock Airport can come under there's a status in it called a peripheral area, uh, which would allow for it to come in. Could you give that undertaking that you do that? That's the reason why I've been looking for a review of the 10T network in order and. It was, a, it was a commitment and a programme for government long before ever Brexit, but in light of the fact that Brexit has come around, I think it's more, it's more crucial now that we review the 10T network designation. Um, and I suppose it would be kind of regrettable that no formal application for a review, I acknowledge you have, you have raised it informally, but it would be kind of regrettable that no formal application has been made. And perhaps the Minister could inform us when is it their intention to make a formal application to accelerate the review of the 10T network? Because I think with a review from what Deputy, or Deputy Fitzmaurice is saying, that will enable other, other designation, other ports, other, <coughs> other airports to be designated as part of the core network. Right. We can do Sorry, it just Senator Manny, just, uh, okay. just to... The Transport Commissioner, when, he was before, when she was before us a couple of, I don't know, is it 18 months ago now, did give an undertaking that, depending on the, that it was 2023, as Deputy Troy said, but because of the Brexit situation, that it would be reviewed earlier and that it would take into account the things that were being talked about here. So I, I, I think that it's important, based on that, I would assume that there would be, that Ireland would have be pushing at an open door to review all of that and by saying that, you know, because they're not connected to the core area, that they're ruled out. I would imagine, I would imagine that a very good case would be made in, because we are in a, if you like, for the want of a better word, a crisis situation in three weeks' time. So I think uh, there's a saying somewhere that you always make use of a crisis. So if, 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 if it, if, it, if, it, if it can be possible, and it should be possible, to push an open door, the fact that the Commissioner said that that would be looked at in the context if this thing went off the... Sure, just, just on the point of information that I appreciate, our two senators were absent during the vote, so we took uh, Deputy Troy's answers or questions in the interim, but once they're finished, I think, and talk to... Oh, sorry, Shandor Kedig. You have to speak yet, I think, ask questions. No, right. So we'll give you Thank the floor then. No, but uh, i just try and get, uh, you, sorry, sir. Deputy Troy's answers, the rest of them, if you can, please, if that's okay. Pardon? Sorry. Tara. Tara, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let me go back to Deputy <laughs> Troy's questions. Okay. On the... Um, Before you go into the other answers, yeah. will, you, will you answer that specifically, yeah, one like, about the 10T yeah, and the review certainly. of when you'll make a formal application? That's fine. Yep, that can be done. Put yourself. Can, it's, it's yeah, thanks, Deputy. Policy. Um, can, 
I just say, in terms of the proposal that I mentioned on the North Sea Mediterranean corridor, part of that proposal we think will call for review anyway, because a number of member states, France in particular and ourselves, have been pushing for it. So that may call for a review, but we will also do the, the uh, submission to the formal submission to the Commission looking for it. Can I also say just on that that the um, the fact that uh, Watford and uh, Ross Lair are not on the core network, they're still eligible for funding under the uh, under trans under trans European networks. And we have talked to uh, Ross Lair as recently as Monday in relation to the next call. There's a current call that's out there for funds, and Ross Lair are looking to see if there's projects that they can do uh, in relation to that. So there's still eligible for, fun for funding that are there for projects that they have that fall within those calls. The reason was given to us a few years ago that it was private privately owned, would that be right? Unique ownership, well, service, well, right? We won't go into this, that, but what I'm saying is, it is now from this amendment, if you look to the amendment that's gone in in, in Europe, uh, that it is now going to be put in under the tin T and it will become a core note. If that can be done there, surely with the, as Deputy Troy pointed out, with the, with the Brexit in be it Leisure K or uh, Kinnebegs, it's right beside uh, there for a, a core node in uh, Port and Galway and the likes of Knock that you get the West and the North West into the frame if it can be done through an amendment what they seem to have done in Brussels that I presume Ireland will accept with open hands. I think that point is well made there. Uh, okay. it's in, it's in and with no disrespect to you Mr Burke, when the government intend to make a formal uh, application to review the 10T network? Sorry, that will happen shortly. We expect that to happen over the next couple of months. Uh, it will be, be very shortly. I can, I can give you that assurance. Okay.